Big Quanti here, and today I want to discuss and review one of my favorite recent indie games of this year, Pizza Tower. I first heard about this game years ago via video clips of gameplay on Twitter throughout its development and have been looking forward for a very long time. Pizza Tower is strongly inspired by the Waterland series in terms of gameplay, and I'm so glad to see so much positive reception and praise for this indie title. By doing research online, Pizza Tower's development took about 5 years and is, at the time of this review, available on Steam. Before I go on to discuss the game and my impressions, I wanted to mention that I did a straightforward playthrough of the game. I wanted to mention this so to give the perspective of someone who did a basic playthrough of the game without coming through every aspect of it. There's a lot of collectible score tags and achievements that I didn't hit, but that's something to look forward to when revisiting the game. Also, I'm curious if players who enjoy more of a completionist experience would like those aspects of the game of finding everything and clearing levels with the best score and ranks. Like my favorite type of pizza, Pizza Tower does have a good amount of meat to it, and like my pizza eating habits, I can go through it in a sitting or two. I would say Pizza Tower has this somewhat freedom of how you play through it. You can go with a more straightforward approach with just beating the levels, take time to explore, find secrets and clear achievements, or speed went through it. So now I want to talk about the game's visuals, which in my opinion one of the greatest strength, and it's what drew me to the game in the first place. I remember years ago hearing buzz about this game and seeing gameplay, I immediately wanted it. I fell in love with the look of the game, and it feels like a playable cartoon with its somewhat pixel and cartoonish graphics. One cartoon that Pizza Tower reminds me of is Cow and Chicken. I feel like this game oozes with personality, and it really shows with its animations. I also love details like how each level starts with a unique title card, similar to a cartoon episode, or how in some levels like Pig City, there's transitional scenes, or how one level even has jump scares, similar to Five Nights at Freddy's. There's so much variety of wacky visuals for the game, with the different levels and themes, as well as enemies. One last thing I want to gush about with the visuals is the cutscenes. I love the opening cutscene, and it's a perfect way to set this game up. The main character, Pepino Spaghetti, is so expressive and I love to see every frame of animation from this lovable guy. Unfortunately, there's not much cutscenes besides the opening and ending scenes, and although I really want more, it is definitely understandable with the work involved with animation. With the game having a simple and silly premise of a pizzeria in trouble and needing to destroy a tower in order to save the restaurant, there's not really much need for elaborate storytelling and cutscenes. Outside of the game, I've seen a ton of fan art and animation, so that's always cool to see and enjoy seeing so much love for Pizza Tower. Moving on to the gameplay, it's a fun and addictive 2D action platformer that's akin to the Waterland series. Pizza Tower has a total of 19 main levels and the goal is to reach and knock out this pillar and then race back to the start of the level to clear the stage. Throughout the level there are many collectibles and secrets to find to boost your score. Also, there's plenty of enemies and obstacles that can get in the way. Pizza Tower's gameplay seems to focus on chaotically dashing forward, destroying everything in Pepino's path, which can be very satisfying. The level design also incorporates platforming elements, so it's not just mindlessly charging your way through levels. One thing I love is all the power-ups throughout the game. It gives the game so much variety and can be surprised throughout my playthrough. These power-ups can range from a suit of armor, to being a ghost, to having a shotgun, and riding a sausage. Well, a sausage horse. With how the levels are designed, these sequences include a Pope character that removes the power up like it's a curse. This makes it feel very intentional and well thought out. It allows you to have fun with the different mechanics without being frustrating. If you mess up or lose a power up, you can just pick it up and retry again. Besides the goal of reaching and knocking out the pillar and returning to the level's beginning, you also want to collect these Tintian pizza toppings, five in each level. These are important because clearing the stage with these collectibles earn money, which is needed to progress up through the tower and unlock new floors and levels. One thing that Pizza Tower does that's different from other 2D platformers is that there's no health or lives to worry about. With so many enemies, hazards, and pitfalls, there's not really much consequences into receiving damage besides losing points, slowing you down, and messing up achievements. This allows players to take time if they want to and not be too punishing or difficult. However, that does make Pizza Tower a cakewalk. After hitting the level's pillar and running back to the start, there is a timer that adds a sense of urgency. Once this timer runs out, a giant pizza face will try to catch you, and if this happens, you'll need to restart the level all over from the beginning. 
I feel like this gives the game a good balance of not being too casual, but also not too challenging or frustrating. The main exceptions being when trying to clear high level scores and rankings, as well as specific achievements and challenges. On top of the wacky levels, there are also boss fights, which are more of a challenge in these stages actually do have a health system, so taking damage actually becomes a concern. These were a big highlight for me, not only because it adds so much variety, but also great character designs. I don't want to spoil it, but I would have to say the final boss fight was such a great way to end the game, I may dare to say it's very epic. The last thing I wanted to praise about Pizza Tower is the music and soundtrack. I think it's really amazing, and just like the visuals and gameplay, it has a lot of variety and charm. Even though there's so much I love about Pizza Tower, there are a few criticisms that I have. Like I mentioned earlier, when I played through the game, it was more of a straightforward or vanilla run. However, I did find many collectibles and secrets, as well as clearing most levels with a good rank. Although I didn't make too much efforts finding these secrets, there were many times that when I tried, I only bumped into walls and not find anything at all. Many times, besides collecting the pizza toppings or ingredients that earn you money, I found that I didn't come across any secrets for that level at all. Even though I'm not too much of a completionist, I think it can be frustrating to collect everything, finding all secrets, getting the highest ranking per level, and clearing all achievements. To me, it does feel a bit cumbersome or too challenging to comb through every nook and cranny of this game, but on the plus side, it does add a lot of replayability with these objectives. I would be curious to hear from someone who enjoys finding every secret and beating all achievements or challenges, if it's done well or just frustrating padding. Let me know in the comments. I do have a few more complaints, but honestly, these are more like tiny nitpicks. With being a 2D platformer, such as one inspired by the Waterland series, the controls include jumping, dashing, and attacking. It's nothing too complicated, but I kind of wish there would be something like in the pause menu where you can view a cheat sheet that reminds you what all the moves do. Even though the controls are for the most part simple, I did find myself taking time to get re-familiar with them when starting a new play session, such as remembering that you can do an uppercut move in the air. Also, during my first playthrough, I had no idea what the taunt move does and didn't really use it. When you do get a power up and pause the game, it does remind you of the controls of it, especially since there's a variety of them with their own unique mechanics. I just wish it would have done this for the basic controls, even if it just helps out a little bit. My other nitpick is I wish it was an easier way to select a level or stage to play. I get the game's hub of running through a floor to find levels adds to the game's feel and charm, but it can feel a bit annoying when trying to replay a level and waste time running through the tower and traveling between different floors. I wish it was more of a fast travel or level select, especially if you want to replay a level to find a collectible or secret that you might have missed the first time. With Pizza Tower having a lot of replay value, it's a shame that it feels like such a pain to play a specific level again. Maybe make it a feature that unlocks after beating a floor or even beating the game. It would be really nice if it made it easier to review what you missed on certain levels and simply jump into any level you want to replay. I had bought Pizza Tower at launch and noticed that in the update, they added some control binding. I found it very helpful with controls such as the super jump and the ground pound. So there have been some quality of life improvements since its release and feel that there could be a few more improvements made. So in conclusion, Pizza Tower is an amazing indie game that I highly recommend and I'm so happy to see its great reception after being in development for so long. From its visuals, to its gameplay, to its music, to even the level design, this game oozes with so much personality and charm. Even though the main gameplay is heavily inspired by the Waterland series, Pizza Tower makes a great twist to the 2D platform genre to stand out. It's generally easy to pick up and play, but definitely has its challenges, including boss fights. The difficulty may not be too intimidating, but there are challenges such as collectibles, level ranks, and achievements to add more. Besides that, I don't have many complaints besides minor nitpicks. One improvement I would love to see is a level select or more convenient fast travel for different floors, even if it's an option that's unlockable. They have been improvements in the past, such as control binding, so maybe we'll see other quality of life improvements down the road. Also, I wanted to mention that I have seen some things online, such as a possible co-op multiplayer mode and additional playable characters, but I'm not sure if these are mods or just messing with the debugs of the game. If you know more info about this, post in the comments below. One thing I wanted to mention is that I have noticed some Pizza Tower gameplay videos on YouTube of doing what's called a Pizza Face Challenge. Basically, it's when you knock out the level's pillar and activate Pizza Time, you stop and wait until the timer runs out. 
Once it does, Pizza Face shows up, and then you start running to the beginning of the level. This adds an option of a more difficult challenge, since you can still beat the level as long as Pizza Face doesn't catch you. What makes this so challenging is now you have to essentially speedrun the level with such precision, because any mistake will cause you to fail. So I will end this review by saying that I give Pizza Tower my highest recommendations and a must play for fans of platformer type games. It has so much personality and charm with its visuals, gameplay, and music. It's very fun and easy to pick up, but still has its challenges and at times frustrations. I would say that the game's main length is pretty decent and easy to plow through, but with its variety, square attack ranks, and achievements, this game does have a lot of beat to it. If you're inclined to, check out my playthrough of Pizza Tower through my stream VODs, link in the description. Also consider subscribing to this channel and feel free to comment thoughts on this game or other recommendations. Thanks for watching and have a great day!